Hi, Somer. Welcome back uh, to the next episode. Happy to be here. So, uh, Somer, this is all about AI. This, this, today we're going to talk about all about AI and how um, Intel can help companies on their AI journey. And as you know that AI is now ubiquitous. You know, I mean, when I was trying to come, come here today, I opened uh, my map application. I expected to know where I'm going because, you know, there were multiple emails and multiple chat responses about where it should meet. So, so expectations are very high. Customers expect your application to be smart, to be AI driven, to know kind of intuitively, uh, you know, what, what we'd want next. So in that kind of landscape, right, how can Intel help customers uh, with their kind of workloads, but especially if you want to focus a little bit more on their AI workloads? Sure thing, Babesh. I mean, great example you brought up, right? Now, if I were to take it back a little bit, if you really look at this whole journey that's happening, um, we, we believe that we need to look at it in, a, in a three phases and an evolving fourth phase. Okay. So if you look at the phase one or web 1.0, it is about digitization, right? Okay. You have data, you have a lot of data, you're creating data, what have you. Web 2.0, is fundamentally about analyzing that data. You have the data, you, you create analytics, you give output. Mm -hmm. What we're moving towards today, most of it is Web 3.0. Mm -hmm. What is Web 3, and I'm, I, I also read it's part of your interest area, right? So in, in Web 3.0, what you're talking about is data is actually getting distributed, right. getting heterogeneous. Mm -hmm. You really want to be able to put it close to the end user, or whoever is generating the data, so they can make the best decisions. Okay. Right about how to monetize that data, mm -hmm. how to use that data, how to make sure it is secure. Right. So now what I'm talking about is, and by the way, the evolving force phases. I'm sure everybody has heard about Chat GPT, okay. right? The generative AI. Yep. What happens in that? Yeah. What do we need to do for that? Right. And we'll talk about it in a little bit. Right. Absolutely. But if you think about this four phases, especially this phase three, I'm talking about, which is the majority web three dot space, you should think about going back to what you need for you using it for a map is different from me when I'm trying to get my healthcare system up. Okay. So what Intel do as, at a silicon level is how to improve that conversation is uh, provide purpose-built solutions. Like for example, we talked about Xeon, which is more of a data-centric capabilities. Mm -hmm. But if you're talking about if video camera, we have something called Movidius, which is an edge capability. Okay. So providing a portfolio of solutions that could meet the requirements of a, pur a purpose-built workload or, so, or ask that the customer has is kind of step one. Okay. okay. Now, if you take that as a baseline, the next thing of the conversation becomes, you got to be secure, as I keep saying. Okay. Right? How do you mention the security? And a lot of times the security, by the way, the AI, if you go to generative AI, you don't even know what data is. Okay. How do you make it zero trust when, there is, when you don't even know the next issue? So we are very focused on making the security piece of it. How can you make it zero trust? Okay. Beyond that, to us, AI is a full stack solution. So we obviously work on the libraries, we work on improving the, you know, the pie churches and the tensor flows, what have you. you. You'll see us kind of doing that. It's all about access. It's all about making it available for developers to be able to go and do that. And finally, lot but not, last but not least, the tools, framework, what have you. So how we're improving? I told the silicon level. I told you the security around it. I told you about how you have worked with your frameworks and tools and libraries to optimize. We talk about access. And finally, we talk about the frameworks. So you know now that uh, for a company there are just way way too many tools, way too many stacks, right? So much happening in AI. How can a company leverage AI better for themselves? My personal observation, having you know, been in the industry and looking at it, is it needs a fundamental reimagination of the business process right now, Correct. right? Because what is possible today in terms of what AI can offer, mm -hmm. what is required from AI to offer, what the affordability of the computation and the latency, what have you, I think it it, it requires a, it requires a rehaul of this business processes organization they're going through okay. to work at what's the best available and how you do that. Mm -hmm. And I think to me, if I if I were to make one request to the customer base or to to, to the users, mm -hmm. they need to reimagine the business process to be able to use the best available to give the best outcomes. Going back to the three or four fundamental problems that you know we talked about: problems of tomorrow, complexity of today. Right, sustainability, Correct. how do you make sure that it's secure, and what's the final outcome. Existing process where you cludge or you know, ad hoc fixes probably exposes these organizations to more vulnerabilities from a security perspective. Got it. And uh, uh, Samar, you are right that um, you, know, you have to reimagine that in every process, don't you? Earlier, for example, uh, you go to an e-commerce site, and if, if it's a grocery kind of site, right? 
customer were happy putting okay i want milk and eggs and sugar and whatever whatever you but now the customer expects that okay i buy it every week why can't you predict for me that okay i'm going to be and and already kind of recommend that these are the five things we think you might want to put in your card right and good that you brought it up because if you talk about generative ai it exactly is addressing what you're talking about you're saying hey look there is not enough data to train my models there is not enough data to go and validate what i'm talking about i need it here and now So historically if you see there is data which is processing then there is this inferencing and then there is this whole modeling let's make sure the model is perfect what have you now you are essentially trying to say i need to be generating it on the fly train it on the fly Correct. and give the output to bhavesh that he's looking for Correct. yeah so what does it require it requires that the platforms and solutions are able to drive the convergence at a platform level itself to be able to give you the output and by the way and that i'm proud of being at intel because if you look at the zion 4 gen mm-hmm. it exactly does that Absolutely. so you, if um, we have something called advanced vector extensions or avx 512 it it addresses the part about the data processing i talk about right it we also has something called vector neural you know neural network instructions or vnni Bet- this has been the key drivers for intel's um, i would say leadership in inferencing where majority of your today's inferencing lies on zion a it gives you probably hopefully close to what you're looking at we're not done there as yet B it also gives you the cost optimized conversation right. right or a sustainable conversation or a low power conversation that you're looking at that's where we are going forward how does intel help customers managing this kind of edge to cloud to on premises kind of you know uh, data and uh, uh, infrastructure management of work or especially ai workloads across these different platforms at a silicon level itself we have made it pervasive as i said the advanced matrix extension or amx is part of every core right Fantastic. but at the same time you really need your hardware to be aligned to the workflow requirement here the second t- thing we bring about as i say is try to make it secure because if the moment you talk about orchestration across multiple cloud yes. how do you drive the security across the platform is something that we are kind of very clear about right mm-hmm. i'll refer to a project with google called open xla right okay. we have a low level virtual machine that we have actually exposed this to the developers right okay. what happens is that when the whole open community has an access to it we don't even can we can't even predict what kind of branches it is generating and the output it is generating which is for the broader community to use okay. so we have a worked with them on the open xla project beyond when we look at our like uh, versions of python and what have you or we have certain dnns that we talk to mm-hmm. we have actually contributed that to the community okay so which means that all its capabilities are now available and accessible for developers and organization to you to optimize the usage of ai last but not the least if you if you if you learn or if you have if you get a chance please do open vino in your you know since you're from the cloud world as you're talking about right what open vino does is a lot of times you know it, it happens that the time you take to you know train a model get the right model optimize for your data set with the speed that you're moving it on bare metal it takes a lot of time right so open vino gives you a framework to be able to use optimized models which are at times pre-built so you have may have to customize it to your data a little bit sure. but it gives you pre-built right that conversation of a framework with the models that conversation of accessibility from developer who are already using those application that confidence of trust and then a platform which is hopefully cost optimized leveraging what you need that's the complete you know, spectrum and i'll give you an example by the way on on this since you brought this up one of the fujitsu and um uh, india has a couple of you know large customer relationship organizations uh, like sasbit like a zoho or a, or a, yes. or a freshworks what have you who are like unicorns right and when you look at crms one of the biggest thing is sentimental analysis how do you have this multiple channels of data communication coming in how do you are able to predict that sentiment to make sure you're making the right call at the right latency in a right uh, sla back to the customer right okay. fujitsu has been able to leverage our technology working with our models right and certain optimal models that we have them optimized through open vino to get a forex improvement on the sentiment analysis that they provided to their customer so that's the kind of impact you can create a by doing providing right capabilities and b working with the ecosystem to support the customer it just makes life of organization so much easier that they don't have to have a very strong data science team generating those models from scratch and you know spending so much 6 months 8 months 10 months to kind of create that model they can just take that model deploy it wherever they want and uh, you know get full benefit of that there you go and i think you know if you take i gave you an example of sentiment analysis we are working with organizations in india 
Uh, we are working with organizations who are working with the KYC, a computer vision based conversation, because nowadays getting the Aadhaar card, getting the, you know, Correct. those are models where improvement or, or change of the latency number by 3x, 4x makes a fundamental dip difference in terms of their customer satisfaction. Absolutely. And I think sometimes, um, you know, people just see cost per unit. But I think what also I'm hearing is that with so many different kind of accelerations that uh, uh, Intel Xeon, uh, uh, the 4th gen provides, that customers should try it out, try out the CPU with their different workloads, see the performance gain that they are getting, and really try to have the TC or true cost of ownership, the true cost of workload with that. Because, you know, on uh, on cloud or on-premises, if you have, uh, you know, 100 CPUs doing one unit of work and one CPU doing 100 units of work, right. it's the same. It's the same. You know, it, it doesn't really matter. And in many cases, it's better because, you know, then you have to manage less amount of CPUs, less amount of virtual machines. to will do the same amount of work. And, and in that context, you know, given that it's a new platform and, you know, it, as I said, it's moving so fast. Okay. If, question, if, you know, the, the audience and the customers have any questions, I would just request them to reach out to us. I mean, the information is available. We'd be happy to walk them through and help them. And again, in the process, we learn as well. Correct. Because I'm sure it is not solving every problem. What else do we need to do? Because it's all about customer in, hearing to the customer in that what our solutions should offer. Great. On that note, thank you so much, Somer, for being here. Really appreciate it. Thank you, and a great discussion, and looking forward. Thanks.